Good morning, everyone. I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. And I have some really interesting things that have been coming forward that I want to share. Uh, and yeah. we are in such amazing times of great change. We're here on planet Earth, and I believe because of much of the ancient cosmology that we've been learning from, and my first book, Shift of the Ages, the 21st Century Superhuman books are about how to live in these times. And what we talk about is all of the ancient prophecies that tell us about what is going on today. We are in such an amazing time on planet Earth. And we're at the ending of an age. We're at the ending of an age of darkness. And all of the darkness is surfacing. And that includes the darkness within us, the darkness within our culture, and the darkness that's been created in this world so that we can awaken and live in an awakened society, live in a culture that is founded in love, peace, love, and plenty for all, where everyone has oh, enough. And also to say our audio book of book one, Shift of the Ages, is now available. I'll put the link with this video. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today and focus upon is the how-tos are in this book. So our most powerful quality is that we are creators. We are created in the image of God. As Yeshua said, these things shall you do and greater. We are really here as creator beings in this amazing quantum world. And our thoughts, our emotions, what we put forward actually creates what shows up around us. And how is that possible if bad things are showing up around us? We can say, well, I didn't create that. So we were designed to operate in love and everything that is happening in this matrix or reality game, we can call it, is a product of our giving up our responsibility. What we see going on around us that we don't like is us giving up our responsibility or our ability to respond as creators. And it's really important that we grasp and get the power of our creatorship. Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now talks about this. Abraham has had a great teaching over the last many years, really teaching us how to access that where we put ourselves in our thought, in our emotion, is what is going to bring what shows up next in our world. And this is actually so much power, more powerful than we've ever imagined. It's so much more a part of our reality than we've ever imagined. So we're kind of babies at getting this. We're just beginning to get how powerful a creators we are. And Everything that we see that we don't like can also be resolved by us reclaiming our creatorship. That is what is so cool. And again, this is what the 21st Century Superhuman books are about, step by step, how to do this. Got Guide. the guidebooks for these times and the most important books on the planet. And I encourage you to read them or listen to them, um, books three and four, um, the third edition within the next um, few um, weeks as well. So in the creation story, and I just like using these stories that have been in the Bible, in prophecies, because they really tell us about the deeper knowledge that lies within the consciousness of humanity about our lives. So what I say about the Adam and Eve story is Adam said, well, I didn't do it. She did it. And Eve said, well, I didn't do it. The serpent did it. And I believe what this story is telling us is each one gave up their creatorship. Adam said, well, I'm not the one who created it. 
let's blame it on her. So blame is blame, fear, um, hostility, um, judgment, and control are a big part of this giving up our our ability as creators. So then we live, we percolate in these less healthy levels of consciousness. So instead of us saying, hey, I didn't do it, it doesn't have anything to do with me, I want us to begin to understand how it does have to do with me and how I can change it. Well, part of that is that in our unconscious, in our lower below conscious layers, we have a lot of data that's been carried by our generations hatred against each other, um, um, anger about various. feelings of lack, and all of these things can be resolved. And there's ways to clean those out of there. The biggest thing and the easiest thing is just to breathe, smile, and love. And by so doing, we literally change our neurobiology. And when something arises that is not of love, we cancel, release, and let go. That's the simple formula. And if you just do that, you will be creating amazing change in your life. So how much effect do we have in the world? Well, Robert Redford in the movie Havana tells Lena Olin, a butterfly can flutter its wings over a flower in China and cause a hurricane in the Caribbean. They can even calculate the odds. And what we are fond of saying in the 21st century superhuman movement is that we are constantly setting new timelines in motion every second with our thought, with our emotion, with where we're focusing, we are setting new timelines in motion. So we set a new timeline in motion and we can overcome old timelines that are not healthy. We can set new positive vibrations into form. The picture behind me, I have some interesting people with me today, by the way. One is President Kennedy, who I adore. I was 11 when he was assassinated. I was at a friend's birthday party and I remember seeing it come on on TV in 1963. And I, I also have with me today the new quarter. Can you believe it? Look at this picture and see what it is. Yeah. And my friend posted this the other day and I was like, oh my God, what is this? And then we also see the ripples in the pond, right? Because everything we do, everything we say, Everything we think goes out into the world like ripples in a pond. And it's time for each of us to take upon ourselves that responsibility. It's time for us to live in a way where we can respond to what we see is going on in this world as creators. And we can, we can take action. We can speak to our friends. We can post things. We can create a new business or opportunity, ways of interacting in our community. There's so much that we can do that we're developing new aspects of ourselves right now. We're kind of giving birth to new aspects of ourselves. So another thing that really affected the world was something called the shot heard around the world. And um, um, one of those was the opening shot of the Battle of Concord in 1775 of the American Revolution, which ended up creating the United States of America. Another one was the assassination of President Kennedy. And that shot was heard around the world. And I'm gonna read you something in just a minute by him and some of the words that he said that really shed light on some of the things that we're dealing with today. There's a really great speech. I had to dig for it to find it on YouTube. Uh -huh. A talk JFK gave in 1961 on secret societies. He said, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence. And this was something he was really in shock, I think, about discovering as a president. And he committed himself to changing it. It is a system which has cons conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. 
And in another speech, he says, if you are waiting for finding of a clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence have no, has never been more imminent. With your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. And this is JFK, our really beloved president who stood for the values of humanity. And I'm really thankful today. I'll say it. I know not everyone is for Trump, but I love knowing what is going on behind the scenes with President Trump. Yes, I'm a conspiracy theorist and the, and the Q movement. Millions of patriots now working to open the doors for a world filled with freedom and abundance for all. The coming Nasara Gasara, which will change our economic systems around the world and rebalance things, make it possible for everyone to have enough, to repurpose our poisoned agriculture, to repurpose our healthcare systems, to really make people healthy instead of just medicating, to bring forward thousands of patents for humanity that have been hidden. We are at the dawning of a new age. It requires your participation as a creator, focusing and doing positive things. And we can be all doing positive things in these days of great change. Well, so much has come up lately. There's a huge movement, a, a revelation movement. We call it the apocalypse, the revealing, the great reveal. That's what this word apocalypse means, the great reveal of the amount of human trafficking that has been done on the planet, of the cell of adrenochrome made from human blood. You can look it up and find it on Google. This is not a secret. This is really crazy. And it's probably one of the most valued drugs in the world and it's been used in Hollywood. Um, pedophilia is being revealed as being huge in Hollywood. Um, 22,000 children disappear a day and 8 million a year. And what I just want to say is many of us are standing and saying human children and humanity are not for sale. So many are going to work on this and part of it is dancing around and getting past these huge conglomerates that run our, our voice, our mechanism for getting truth out and being able to speak this truth in a way that it can be heard and it can reach people. So it's really important that all of us begin participating in this. Um, Hitler knew that if he could create fear around anything, and he created it around the Jewish people, right? If he could create fear around anything, he could get the people to do whatever he wanted. And Operation Mockingbird was a program started during the Cold War by the CIA in 1949, and it manipulated the news media for propaganda purposes. And that went on until 1975, although other programs still operate behind the scenes. If you've ever seen one of these shows that has conglomerated what newscasters are saying all around the world, they're all saying exactly the same thing. And so this is well put together. It is not accidental. So I have a really good friend named Ralph who said to me, yeah, I told my TV to go stand in the corner until it had something good to say. And I was one of those lucky people who my parents only let me watch two TV shows a week. And when I was a kid, and then I never got into TV at home. And again, we have conventional media on the internet as well. But we need to go beyond the mainstream news and be looking for the deeper news behind it. Jim Morrison said, whoever controls the media controls the mind. And remember how powerful our minds are as creators. Our These things shall you do in greater. You are created in the image of God. God is a creator. We are creators. And so remember that if we spend our time focusing on fear, focusing on war, focusing on chaos, focusing on distraction, we are not going to be able to create as we so choose. And so let's choose where we place our thoughts. It may require meditation. It may require walking every day. It may just require breathing, smiling, and loving because these things activate a whole new set of neurobiology in our body so that what we create can be created from what we choose to envision goodness for the children food for everyone healing for everyone balanced economic systems repurposing of corporations that have been doing damage we need to learn to see our choices and our desires in positive constructive ways instead of 
wrapping fear around them. Because when we wrap fear around them, we continue to hold in form that which we are fearful of. So all these external threats literally cause cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance means we're imbalanced. We don't know where our center is. And when we don't know where our center is, it gives others the opportunity to put not good things into practice around us. So we have to choose where we stand in this and remember where our power is as creators. So I extend the invitation to look at how you are living. Look at how we are living. This is our moment to reclaim our humanity. How cool is that? This is our, uh, this is our opportunity to stand up to be alive, to recognize our ability as creators. And again, remember the 21st century superhuman books, the new ones with the gold seal on the front that we're just putting out in the third edition, book one you can get in paperback, audio, and ebook now. Look for those on Amazon and they're also translated into Spanish if you have Spanish friends you wanna share them with. These are guidebooks for how to do this. So when we abandon love, and liberty for debt and dependency. We need to remember that we are part of the greatest ecosystem ever made. And remember that the hero arises from defeat, summoning the superhuman from within them. So let's activate our superhuman self. Interesting, let's just talk about what's going on with Corona and we can call it beer, you know, um, um, but we'll call it other things. So documents at the WHO website from five years ago. And I wanna thank Ramola D reports um, on YouTube, she found all these things. And um, I ended up running across her video and it was very revealing to me. And I want to share it with you that this has been planned by a global monitoring pandemic board. Uh, so this is actually a simulation we're in. And in 2010, the Rockefeller Foundation published a 54 page document called Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development. On page 18 features the pandemic scenario lockstep, airtight rules, wearing face masks, body temperature checks at communal spaces, and supermarkets with intensified restrictions. That's why we call this a plan. Um, these reports reveal that the world is now undergoing a live training and simulation exercise <clears throat> involving a worldwide pandemic caused by a respiratory virus. They further reveal that the groundwork for this plan was established as far back as 2005. Um, actually, we're talking at almost three decades, right? Um, and there are a lot of comments by politicians, by Fauci at different times, knowing that this was coming. Incredibly, 196 countries were signed on and legally bound by the WHO and the UN to participate in this drill. Interestingly enough, my husband and I were watching Captain America the other night because we had heard about some things in there. It's really cool, a cool story and good. Um, um, at the end, there is um, um, in on the um, big lit up signs, there is a bottle of Corona beer. And then on the opposite side, there's an image of a virus. And in 2016, in Dr. Strange, it's interesting at the end, he fights death in a time loop with a virus image floating around um, this virus image that we've been seeing lately. And so he goes into this time loop to fight death and to get death to leave the environment that he's in. Let's remember we have superpowers. Let us remember where we focus. Let us not give our power away. I also want to thank Steve Barwick, who wrote a great article on ritual initiation and truth stream media. And I'll put l these links with this video on YouTube later tonight, uh, my 21st Century Superhuman YouTube channel. And Trucery Media put out a video called The Characteristics of an Initiation Ritual. And I'd like to share some of these because these are very interesting. So there are occult themes and ritual characteristics in what's going on. Rituals have been used from time immemorial to 
transform reality. Rituals contain data and symbols to set new patterns in place, which create the language by which new society members communicate after they are initiated. Now, I might go through a ritual if I was going to stay at an ashram. I might isolate myself, be really quiet and go internal. I might meditate. I mean, people do Vipassana meditation and go into silence for 21 days and meditate every day with others. And in so doing, they literally let go a lot of the old form of who they are in order to welcome in a new form. So let me read a few of how these um, ritual ideas apply to what we're doing today. Day, and they're very interesting. And what I'd like us to recognize is that we need to look inside ourselves and say, mm -hmm. in the middle of this global ritual experience that's going on, how can I claim my superpower as a creator? How can I claim myself and not be in cognitive dissonance, not be in confusion, and be able to create in a positive way. Actually, I forgot to read something above here that I wanna read you. I wanna talk about Mystery Babylon before I talk about this. I started talking about the adrenochrome, the human trafficking, and all of these things that are surfacing. So in Revelation 17:5, where Babylon is talked about in the Bible, um, Babylon, the word Babylon means confusion. And we know Babylon, there was a Tower of Babel, there was an area called Babylon. But Babylon in the scriptures through uh, the concordance means confusion. Mystery, so mystery Babylon is the word in this verse. It comes from a derivative of the word Muau for shutting the mouth, a secret or mystery through silence imposed by initiation into religious rites. Um, Revelation 17, 5, the woman on the beast. And the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, abundance, great abundance. She held in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of earth's abominations, obscenities in the world, sexual immorality, on her forehead was Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I could see that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, and I was utterly amazed at the sight of her. I used to read the Bible, you know, like 30 years ago. I was really involved in it, and I don't a lot anymore, but I have that ingrained in my consciousness. And I believe that there are teachings in there for us. And these teachings are about today. And I know even other um, religious philosophies talk about abominations in the world. And when we talk about blood cults, sacrificing children, taking their blood, um, torturing them to get them to a point where adrenochrome, which you can look up on Google, it is available on Google. Um, you can search for it and read about it. But this is 30 years ago, I would not have had any idea of what is being uncovered and revealed in this great apocalypse, in this great reveal on planet Earth today. So when we talk about what is going on, there's a level of corruption that has been imbued into human culture. And this is affecting us. And really for us, it is a wake up call. And what's important for us to realize, and this is what's in the 21st century superhuman books about how we create in a quantum reality. What I have to do is instead of blame like Adam and Eve did, oh, I didn't do it, she did it, he did it. I have to go inside myself and say, what data is being carried around in my unconscious through my ancestors, through my generations that literally has created this in our world? And can I go, this is what true forgiveness is. It is removing the hatred, the anger, the violence from within ourselves. True forgiveness in the ancient Aramaic, and this is in book two of 21st Century Superhuman, which you should be able to find on Amazon with the gold seal book to mind. And I'll put these links again with this video and on 
the YouTube channel. But true forgiveness in the ancient Aramaic mm -hmm. is that we remove this old data. We are like a biocomputer and we are, we are creating in this system. So uh, for instance, I am of Middle Eastern background. I'm of Jewish background. I have both of those in my heritage. Um, and imagine how those cultures hated and have been at war with each other for eons. You know, mm -hmm. I used to listen to my dad and his brothers just yep. yell, yell at each other all afternoon, every Sunday. And um, this is inside of me. This anger about the world, about how she, things should be, about telling others they're right or wrong. All of this is inside of me. And it's important for me to remove those um, things. We have some worksheets. We have some consciousness process in book two, Mind of 21st Century Superhuman, teaching you how to remove these things from your body, mind, spirit continuum, because we literally are a biocomputer. So let's look at the rituals that we're involved in right now and how those are potentially um, through a manufactured simulation. Um, there are four occult mini rituals going on. Each has a distinct purpose yeah. to transform the world into potentially a new global order. However, if we wake up in this dream spell, if we wake up in this dream spell and we begin to realize and remember that we are creators and we can use each one of these rituals for our own awakening, this is what we must do. And again, I might use these rituals at an ashram where I go to be at peace to clean house, to cleanse, to detoxify, and to awaken new aspects of myself. So let's use them for that. Initiation and lockdown are age-old occult rituals to initiate participants into a new order of life. In this case, potentially a new global order, which creates confusion. So the initiate does not know where to ground themselves. Well, we know where to ground ourselves. We are creators. We breathe, smile, and love. We clear, cancel, release, and let go anything that arises that is not of love. This is the formula. Do it. Do it daily. Do it every moment. Isolation for purification, part two. Isolated from the mundane or the world, that we suspend our normal rules of living and we become detached insulated and purged. So as we do, let's look inside ourselves and say, what in me have I not expressed yet? Who am I really? Who is the truth of my being? What is the truth of my being? What would I like to bring forward in this life, in this world that I have not done yet? What's on my bucket list? How can I live as if life really mattered? Maybe it won't be here tomorrow. How can I live in such a way that I hold nothing back for the truth of my being. Let's use the isolation and the purification to search for that within ourselves. Signals that consent of your subservient position under new masters and letting your position go in your own creatorship. So what is this all about? Let's think about that and let's think about what it means to us. Is it a muzzle? Is it an opportunity to tell us that our voice doesn't matter? Let's remember our voice does matter and let's use it. Let's empower this fifth chakra. Let's resonate to the world the truth from our heart that we are creator beings operating in love and that we see the way to change the world through that power. Let us express that power. Occult hand washing washes away the old way of being so the new order can be firmly established. What a ritual to engage in every day. So let us think about what that means. What am I letting go of? I'm letting go of the darkness inside of me. I'm releasing my old data of unconsciousness, apathy, grief, sorrow, sadness, fear, anger, internal anger, external anger, pain. I'm releasing all those things every time I wash my hands and I am imbuing myself and grounding myself in love, in pure love, breathing and smiling and resonating through that focal point to the world. Everything I do, I am now living the positive creation of myself as a creator. Social distancing or the breaking apart of the bonds with our fellow man-woman 
remember what the great teachings tell us is we are one, the body of Christ. We are all one. We are connected and we don't want to break apart that stable and cohesive unit. We need connection with our brothers and sisters. Find ways to do it, whether it's through Zoom meetings. Get together and talk about how you're creating change. Get together and talk about how you're creating out of love. Begin a YouTube channel. Um, no. Meet with people in your neighborhood, wherever you are, that you have people who I, I'm really excited to see some people who are standing up and doing amazing things. A group in Austin, Texas the other day opened up a park and went in and swam in the river, probably several hundred people. Um, I saw a group marching um, the other day just saying freedom for all people. We are dealing with symbolization of isolation from everything normal mm -hmm. to be purified from our old ways, to sacrifice to the new order. So let's make this a new order of our choice, a new order of higher consciousness, a new order of inner peace, a new order of functioning through love. And here's a couple of biblical quotes um, in Judges. And Gideon was one who said, I don't know about you, but me and my house, we serve the Lord. Whoever is fearful and trembling may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 of them turned back, but 10,000 remained. So remember, we have the opportunity to get focused in our creatorship, to live as children of God, to live as creators in this world. Um, there are many occultists in, the wor in this world who have chosen to put this ritual upon us, this ritual training. Global leaders, heads of corporations, and 30 countries, including the United States, have now used mandates to get people to wear, you know? So um, on the philosophy that they will stop infections. However, experts, including the Surgeon General of the United States, have openly stated that this will have no beneficial effect whatsoever. And what's more is many medical experts who have been pushed off of our favorite social media channels um, have attested to the fact that they can even be dangerous to one's health in that they curtail clear thinking and even consciousness by trapping carbon dioxide in the chamber of the forcing mass. us to rebreathe it over and over, thus depleting our blood of fresh air and the life-giving oxygen component it contains. Dentists are reporting more dental problems due to mouth breathing and it causing infections in the gums and teeth. So among other things, it is a token of us willing to be silent. So here we are. Let's use our voice. Choose to use your voice. Be the voice you are. Come from your heart, from your soul. So anyone who has created corrupt practices on the earth, um, who has chosen to mirror the darkness inside of us. We call them Team Dark, and they are doing their job as well. What we want to say about them is, in order to play the Team Dark role, they have been giving up their souls. They have been separating from their souls very deeply in order to discover what that journey is. So let us hold the resonance in this world of being connected to our soul. Our soul is the greater us. Our soul is what feeds into this body and brings life to it. Our soul is the presence that is the joy of our being, that loves to dance, that loves our family and our friends. So let us not let this current operation simulation put us into cognitive dissonance. Let's recognize our confusion when it is happening, the confusion of Babylon, the mystery of Babylon, which we are at this shift of the ages, this is what is happening. It's like when the tide changes in the ocean and there's turbulence. The waves come in, the waves go out, and there's this huge, sometimes a huge turbulence. We are in that time right now. There is no escaping it. But what we must do is breathe, smile, and love. Clear anything from our unconscious. Cancel, release, and let go anything not of love that rises up into our consciousness and send our, our awake thoughts out into the world resonating like ripples in the pond. If one drop of water in the pond is us and those ripples going out literally start new timelines, literally create in this reality. And I haven't really mentioned the bat on the quarter. Would you be surprised to have a bat on a quarter? 
Who can guess why that is? The new quarter of the United States of America. My friend posted a picture of this on Facebook. Thanks, JP. And that is the quarter sitting on her hand. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? Guess where in the research laboratories, the development of some of the coronavirus happened. That's right. That's why we have it put on a quarter to help increase cognitive dissonance. I know there will be many who will be like the 22,000 on Mount Gilead in Judges 7, 2, and 3. Again, whoever is fearful and trembling may turn back and leave Mount Gilead where God was. And many will do that. There are these people they call Karens. I don't know where that word came from. But in some cities literally have 200,000 calls coming in reporting on their neighbors, not following the ritual simulation. But remember, 10,000 remain. Remember, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whatever religion you're in, I don't care. Um, um, it's not to me, religion has again been another management mechanism, but there is truth in these teachings. What if the mark of the beast is not a visible mark, not of X, not a tat, not a quantum dot? not a scarred brand, but instead an invisible spiritual mark called consent. I'll read JFK's comment that's here again. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society, and we are as a people opposed to secret societies, secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. With your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. I want to invite you to 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. There may come a time, I know that right now there is so much blocking of information going on and many of us are just working at different ways to get information out. I do have an email list you can sign up for at my website. We're also working on some reconfiguring at the site to make it more easy for you to get information. Um, I also will be setting up additional playlists at my YouTube channels with videos that it, my YouTube channel, which is 21st Century Superhuman, that I feel are important videos to watch as long as they actually stay up. I'd like to tell you about a couple of dreams that I've had and we'll close with that. A number of years ago, not that long ago, probably in the last five years, I had a really vivid dream, really vivid. It was like I was between dimensions and in that place between dimensions, there were all these people walking around catatonic in orange suits as if they were in prison and they were in these quarters, the prison quarters. And I was outdoors with them, herding them outside saying, come on, let's go. It's time to wake up. It's time to go. Come on, let's go. And it really affected me. You know, I thought there's, there's, there's a, an awakening that needs to happen. There's an awakening to go on. And each of our voices are so important in that. It might just mean saying something to your kid and encouraging them to breathe smile and love. It might be setting up times that you can get outside with your family. You can go on adventures. You can get places where you don't have to follow the simulation. This is really important. Um, supporting others, passing on. One of the ways we can pass on information is through private messages. Um, if it's not working, get on Telegram, get on WhatsApp. We can set up we can literally, um, I actually the other day set up a group on Telegram, um, which I'll be activating. Um, but one of the ways to hear from me and to stay connected is um, um, through my website, 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. So I'll share another, this is my most fantastic dream. And um, I, my, my husband's name, who I am together with for three years, who really? is really my soul mate, soul companion. It's interesting, as I tell you about this dream, my friend Melissa reminded me the other day, his last name is House of Wolves in Spanish. So 
I had this dream, this is many years ago, back in the early 1980s, when we were putting on dolphin programs, I was taking people to swim with dolphins, and I was in a really transformative space, and in the Florida Keys and the Yucatan, actually. So in this dream, I'm running down from like the mountains in Costa Rica, where the ocean is really close to the mountains at night, in the dark, running down with 12 black wolves, running down the mountain. And we are just running through the trees and running through the jungle and running down the mountain towards the ocean and we get to the ocean as the sun rises and the sun is coming up and we walk into the water i walk into the water with the 12 black wolves we walk into the water and the dolphins swim out and they turn around and swim back and as they swim back they turn into 12 holy beings dressed in white and they walk out into the land to heal the land. And friends, that is all of us. That is all of us today. And everyone who this video touches the heart of, please share this with everyone you can. I don't know how long it will stay up. I try and dance around the wording of things. And also find me, follow me at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com and at our my 21st Century Superhuman YouTube channel. If you click subscribe there and click on the bell, you'll get notified when new videos happen. So anyway, love you all so much. I'm so proud of you. And so many are now taking a stand for the truth of their being, for the truth of freedom for humanity. Um, we are raising up, we're dredging up the darkness that existed in this age of dark. It's coming to the surface. And those, again, those brothers and sisters of the darkness, had to separate from their souls in order to mirror that much darkness. And when I look inside myself and I say, cancel, release, and let go, anything inside of me that is not of love, as it rises to the surface, as I think an anger or a hurtful thought or an unconscious thought, I cancel, release, and let go. I breathe, smile, and love, and I live in new ways. Love you all. Put your comments under this video. Um, it really helps us know what else to bring you and to stay connected. Love you all. Many blessings. Remember, you are a creator. Empower your life as a 21st century superhuman with host Carrie Kiristar Ellis and guests. Navigate these times of great change with Carrie's 21st century superhuman book series, being called the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times. You are a creator. Remember to breathe, smile, and love. For as we change ourselves, we change the world. Learn more at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com.